There's a secret part of Android that most people don't touch anymore, and if you're a longtime Android user, you've most likely been there. I'm talking about good old rooting. It gives you access to privileged controls within the Android OS that you typically can't access on a normal device. In other words, you'd be able to do things that you'd never thought were possible. But getting to Candy Island isn't always so easy, and it can even turn your phone into an expensive paperweight if you're not careful enough. So with that said, is rooting still even worth it after all these years? Let's find out. Also, I just released some new beautiful widgets for all of you to try out and use. The calendar widget even collapses, which I thought that was the coolest. And I also pushed out some clean wallpapers that will fit with any home screen, all on my Patreon. Now one of the biggest reasons why people root is to be able to use mods from an app called Magis Manager. These modifications let you change the interface look, add extra features, and fix or improve specific things within the software. All without permanently overriding your system files so that your phone doesn't end up crashing or getting into a boot loop. It's pretty cool. But now it's harder than ever to find modules because Magis Manager no longer includes a list of them within its app. Luckily, you can instead use Fox's Magis Module Manager to bring back that huge library. That way you don't have to scour the internet hoping to find the latest and greatest mods. Plus, it lets you download and install the same modules without needing to leave the app. But it does have one flaw. The repository that grabs all these mods, known as Androidacy, is sometimes unreliable and doesn't always work in downloading every mod. Huge bummer. Still, some of my favorite modules include full screen immersive gesture tweaks to let me modify the gesture navigation. I can remove it entirely, make the spacing a bit smaller when it's in the keyboard, and even disable the back gesture on the left side of the screen, just in case I like to use a side menu app. I also like Systemless Debloater because it lets me remove system apps that usually can't be disabled by configuring a text file within the file manager. If I like to change my system font, I use Font Manager, which has over 200 selections, including Google Sans, which I'm using. It also lets me change the emoji style to something like Blobmojis, iOS, Facebook, Samsung, etc. Another cool module is Stratosphere Performance. It's like an alternate gaming mode. It maximizes your CPU and GPU for the best possible gaming experience. And supposedly, it can even increase the FPS on some popular mobile games like Call of Duty Mobile or PUBG. But personally, I can get the higher refresh rate to work. It's really more useful for those carrying a budget device or an older phone, especially if your OEM doesn't support a gaming mode. On the topic of gaming, Android doesn't support every gaming controller out there. So with a mod called One Controller, you can supposedly add support for more. I say supposedly because I don't have every gaming controller on their list so I can't test it out. But they do claim to support most PlayStation controllers, Xbox, Switch Pro, and more. And finally, Call Recorder is a pretty straightforward mod that lets me record any phone calls, perfect for anyone living in the States. And those are just a few Magis mods out of the hundreds to choose from. You can also install LS Post mods, which gives you even more mods, but these are even riskier because unlike Magis Manager, uh, LS Pose has mods that can edit your system files, and if you install one that isn't supported for your phone, you could end up breaking your device. So unless you know what you're doing, I would stick with Magisk. Another benefit that you get if you root your phone is you could improve your battery life drastically. But before we discuss that, I want to thank Soundcore for sponsoring this video. If you're in the market for a good set of noise canceling earbuds with ultra long battery life, look no further than Soundcore's new Space A40. No lie, these will block out 98% of noise so that you can get personal space from everything happening around you. The earbuds even automatically adapt to the environment based on the noise levels. I thought that was pretty cool. The best part though is that you can have up to 10 hours of playtime on a single charge or a total of 50 hours with the case. That's almost two times longer than the competition. Plus, these earbuds are extremely comfortable since they're one of the lightest choices out there, weighing just a mere 4.9 grams. And when you do jam out, these provide very clear sound with rich middle and crisp trebles. And they are also high res wireless certified, letting you listen to any song as the artist intended. So if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, pick up Soundcore Space A40 through the top link in the description. Anyways, the best way to improve your battery life if you have root is by flashing a kernel. It's basically a bridge between your phone's software and hardware. And just like a desktop, you can underclock them to improve the battery life at the expense of performance, 
I like to lower mine by 25% just because most of the things I do on my phone aren't really power intensive and it really won't affect performance that much, but it will greatly improve my screen on time. Franco Kernel Manager is a great app that lets me do this easily with most kernels. Aside from the basics, there are also a few things that kernels do to optimize the power, such as configuring the types of cores a process can use, disabling certain weight locks, and a lot more. But besides battery saving, they could also increase the charging speed, improve camera performance, let you lower the refresh rate, and a lot more. Now, while all this sounds awesome, you need to know what you're getting yourself into, and you need to know what you're modifying because one bad tweak and your battery life could start instantly draining, or your phone could get slowed down, or even worse, your phone could get into a boot loop. It's scary stuff, but it happens. Plus, a poorly developed kernel can cause more problems than it can do good. So always make sure to do your research before choosing any kernel, find out how you can revert back to your original before flashing anything, and prioritize the ones that are made by well-known developers like Ardor97, Sultan XDA, Freak07, Flare2, or even KDragon. There's also certain apps that can extend your battery life if you have root. A great example is Naptime. On Android, there's a feature called Doze, which basically hibernates your phone when it's locked, not letting most apps or services run until you turn it back on. It extends your standby time immensely. The only problem is that it takes around 30 minutes to start since the last time you touched your phone to enter into Doze mode. Well, with nap time, I can have my Android enter Doze mode immediately after I lock my device, and it even lets me move the phone around without leaving Doze. Very beneficial if you accidentally forget to charge your phone overnight and you want to save that battery. Greenify was also a great app for saving battery because it can put misbehaving apps into hibernation when you're not actively using them. But as of Android 9, a new feature called App Standby Buckets can do the same thing. It even works in a better way by automatically hibernating every app that you rarely use. That way you don't have to manually choose them. There are also a ton of other awesome rooted apps. Repainter, for example, is excellent for anyone with Android 12 or above because it lets you choose any custom color for the system mono theming. It does work without root, but it's extremely limited. Having root will let you change the strength and brightness of the color, choose to use a pure black background instead of a dark gray, and a lot more. For anyone concerned about their privacy, you can use Permission Ruler to instantly revoke all permissions from every app each time you turn off the screen. Then, when you turn it back on, all the permissions get automatically re-enabled. A fantastic way to stop apps from spying on you. Speaking of spying, practically every app on your phone has a tracker. And even though a tracker isn't necessarily a bad thing, some apps have too many and even use them to be able to show you relevant ads. So with an app called Warden, I can find all the trackers within every app. And if I have root, I can even disable those trackers individually. Or the best part is I can just straight up nuke everything and disable every tracker within every app. All at once. Pretty insane. And of course, if you're using a third party launcher like Launcher 12, Quick Switch is a great app or mod that lets you bring back those smooth animations and transitions from the navigation bar. The last and final reason why people choose to root their phones is to obtain an extra level of customization. But in the past few years, customization with rooting has gone down. Before, you had huge theming engines like Substratum and Swift Installer, which let you change the entire look of the interface and most apps. It even worked on non-rooted phones. But ever since Android 9, Google stopped the support of custom overlays, making custom theming on non-rooted phones impossible. And even though you can technically still use Substratum within some custom ROMs, it's still practically dead. There aren't really any new themes being created anymore, with the majority of them being outdated as new OS updates get released. The only one that I did come across that is actually working on some Android 12 phones and isn't complete crap is Iris Monet. Still, don't expect to completely change your OS by just installing Substratum. But what you can do is flash a custom ROM, and surprisingly, there's still a strong community of developers trying to keep this notion alive. The only problem is that installing a ROM isn't so easy. And by the way, you actually don't need to be rooted to flash a custom ROM. That's the biggest misconception ever. But you do need to unlock the bootloader, which can be tough depending on the phone you have. Plus, it's really easy to break your device when trying to install that eye-catching ROM. Personally, I break my device multiple times, including this past week, just trying to install CR Droid. So just be careful. But once you do install a ROM, depending on which one you flashed, you'll be able to do things that you never thought were possible. 
CR Droid on my OnePlus 9 unlocked a whole new world of possibilities, and just to name a few, I can now change the style of my icons in my status bar. I can also replace the heads up notifications with slim and less invasive ticker notifications. I can have musical bars play to the beat of a song within the lock screen, change the monet theming to any custom color similar to the Repainter app. I can remap the alert slider on my OnePlus 9 to do things like enable the flashlight, lower the screen brightness, and more. And the best feature is that I can spoof my device to pretend to be a Pixel XL to obtain unlimited storage backup space within the Google Photos app. Freaking beautiful. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many more features that came with this ROM that it could be a video of its own. Another ROM that I really enjoyed is Paranoid Android. It provides a fantastic user experience by keeping its firmware as close to stock Android as possible, but still carrying a few extra perks. For example, you get some Pixel exclusive features like Screen Call, which lets you answer scam calls using Google Assistant. Quick Tap to launch any action by double tapping the back of the phone the weather pill and battery widget, and even some random useful features like screen off gestures and smart pause, which automatically pauses media when the volume is muted. It may not be as feature packed as some other ROMs, but it's still extremely stable and one that you can use every day without experiencing any crashes or bugs. It's also very smooth and fast since it's based on CLO, which is a modified version of AOSP optimized for Qualcomm chipsets. That's why not many ROMs are as stable or as smooth as Paranoid Android. A few other notable mentions is Pixel Experience, which also brings most of the Pixel exclusive features to any device. And they are one of the ROMs that push out updates extremely fast, even for larger OS updates like Android 13. And Dirtfest is also a great alternative to CR Droid for extreme customization. Now on top of all the positives, you definitely have to consider all the negatives. The first negative is that when you root your device or flash a custom ROM, you're going to start from scratch meaning that all your data, including everything in your internal storage is going to be wiped. So make sure you back up everything on the cloud from Google One and on your computer if you like to restore it. The second negative is there is a possibility of you accidentally breaking your device, meaning that it won't boot up again. Creating this problem is as easy as running the wrong module, flashing the wrong file, making changes to certain system files, or even toggling the wrong button within a rooted app. So never modify or install anything without doing a bunch of research first, because once you break your device, getting it back to normal is such a pain. Another reason why rooting is discouraged is because Google and other major OEMs don't support it. Some manufacturers even make it really difficult to unlock the bootloader if it's possible at all. Plus, an Android API called SafetyNet lets apps check to see if your device has been tampered with. So certain applications like Android Wallet, some online baking apps, and even some games will not work if they detect that you have root. Luckily, Magis does have a couple of ways to bypass this restriction. You can enable Zygis within the settings and add apps to the deny list, or hide the Magis app altogether by changing its label and installing a proxy app with a random package ID. But these methods don't always work. So if you don't want to lose access to some of these popular apps, you can try some of these workarounds or just not root at all. The fourth reason why people don't root is because they believe that it'll void their warranty. And while this is moderately true because you are unlocking the bootloader, most devices let you relock it, making it seem that nothing happened at all. Hell, even some OEMs like OnePlus support rooting, but don't try asking them to help you get back to stock if you have an unlocked bootloader. And the final reason why the majority of people don't root anymore is because it's dying off. Most mods and rooted apps that were once popular are now dying off and no longer receiving updates. There also aren't as many custom ROMs or kernels anymore, especially for newer devices released in the past year or so. I couldn't even find a single ROM or kernel for the OnePlus 10, let alone the OnePlus 10T. And because of this, it's getting even harder to root because there just aren't as many tutorials or even ways to get back to stock Android if you mess up. With that being said, is rooting still worth it nowadays? Honestly, as much as it breaks my heart to say it, it's not. There just aren't as many useful mods as there once used to be, and smartphones nowadays are already very feature-packed, especially Samsung phones. Plus, back in the day, most people used to root their phones because there were so many different ways to improve the battery life and performance. But now, most high-end devices and even mid-tier phones already have a fantastic performance with stellar battery life out the box. So why would you go through the headache of obtaining roots 
or installing a kernel just to slightly increase the battery life. I think the only thing that is worth it though, if you have an older device, is flashing a custom ROM. Because not only is your phone getting those unique extra features, it could also let you gain access to newer OS updates even if your manufacturer no longer supports it. Plus, even if you accidentally get into a bootloop state, your old phone may already have a solution to get back to stock since it's been out for so long. That's just my opinion though. Obviously, I want Root to still be alive and well, and of course, there could be that one app or mod that is enough to make you want to Root, but I just thought about this in a general sense. Still, believe it or not, the first phone that I ever rooted was the T-Mobile G1, and I even made a tutorial back in 2010 showing how to root it. It was a terrible video, but it still brings back so many memories. So that's why, with the help of Grid Studio, I was able to frame my T-Mobile G1 to be able to show it off in my room. It looks absolutely beautiful, displaying every button, keyboard, motherboard, camera, etc., and each part is labeled and spaced out in a way that makes it look like a masterpiece. It's definitely an eye catcher in any room that it's in. Luckily, you can pick one up for yourself since Grid Studio just started selling it on their site. Or they also have other frames to choose from like this first Google Pixel phone, or even some iPhone models. So if you'd like to frame a memorable smartphone in your room, make sure to check out Grid Studio through the link in the description. Either way, that's my review of rooting in 2022. I would love to hear your thoughts about rooting down in the comments. If you enjoyed what you saw, a quick thumbs up would really go a long way. Also, make sure to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on because we release content like this every week and you're not going to want to miss out. Either way, thank you so much for sticking to the end and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!